God is not pleased with your lifestyle. If you're a Christian, be an example. You're so full of lust. You're so consumed with lust. You can't pray. You can't study. And if Jesus come right now, you're doomed for hell. Is it worth it? All these years you tried to serve God, men and women. And today you're running to break up homes? Can you imagine how you're grieving the Holy Spirit? I don't care what you're going through in your marriage. Praise the Lord. Today, it is good to be with you on Shekinah. I pray that you had a great week in the Lord, and we're going to join our hearts in agreement right now for the program. Father God, today we give you praise. We worship you, and we thank you. We thank you for the goodness of Almighty God in every life. Mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name, that is viewing this program today. We ask God, in Jesus' name, you will cover them and their household with your precious blood. Mighty God, during this pandemic, we're asking for divine protection for every home, dear God. Every home. Every home in Jesus' mighty name hide under the blood. And we know that, dear God, you are God. You're a God that keeps your children. You're a God that protects your own. And today we give you praise and we give you thanks. We ask now, dear God, as the word of God goes forth, it will not return void. And mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name, I'm asking for divine unction and divine utterance in Jesus' name. I praise you for the anointing, and I know that without the Holy Spirit, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name, I cannot do it. So God, I'm totally dependent upon your precious Holy Spirit, for I know it is not by might, nor by power, but it's only by your spirit, says the Lord. Mighty God, I thank you again as I ask your blessings on this program, your blessings on your children, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm reading now from Hebrews chapter 13, and we'll go to verse 4. Hebrews chapter 13, and we will go to verse 4. Here is what the Word of God is saying. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. We are going to read this again. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Now, we know that there are lots and lots of problems in marriages in the churches. Lots of problems. And the reason why there are lots of problems in the churches, I cannot um, address marriages out of the church. I would like you to know I'm addressing marriages in the church. Marriages in the church must be addressed because there is so much of wickedness when it comes to the church, universal, and marriages. The reason why I'm not addressing marriages in the world, those people, do, they don't know better. Right? The ungodly does not know better. And because they don't know better, they're doing what they know. 
But when it comes to the church universal, I would like you to know there is a lot, a lot of marriages that are going now on the rocks. And the reason why there are so marriages, there are so many marriages on the rocks is because biblically speaking, we are not honoring the word of God. We are not honoring what God is saying in the word about marriages. So, I would like you to know, I just came in from Guyana, South America. That is where I was born. And my sister uh, back home is very, very ill. So, me and my sister, I have another sister here in Canada. Me and my sister here in Canada went to visit the, my sick sister at home. And you would not want me to tell you, I just came, I just came in about, um, let's say, um, about a week uh, uh, from Guyana, and you would not want me to tell you the heartbreak. The things I see in Guyana is the very things that are going on all over this world. And there is so much adultery, so much wickednesses when it comes to uh, marriages. And it is very, very sad because that is not God's plan for marriages. That is not the, the plan of God. When you make a vow between man and God, it's a serious, serious thing. And I would, I would like to advise on married Christians, think very carefully before you plunge. Go to God and ask God for a mate. Don't just go into stuff. Uh, just, just walk in to relationships and so forth, that is not of God. You must seek God in everything. Your spouse, you would have to live with until Jesus comes. And unmarried Christians, I am advising you to really seek God's direction. It is very important. And do not lean on your own understanding because your ways are not God's ways. God's ways are past finding out. And the reason why so many marriages are on rocks is because people are not seeking God. They're just walking in the lust of the flesh and they're fulfilling the lust of the flesh. And you know when you walk and live in the flesh, you are pleasing the devil you're not pleasing God when you're walking in the flesh because we know that God is a spirit and we have to serve him in spirit and in truth. So I would like to address marriages today. When you make your vows between yourself and God, the vow is I'm going to read now from, I better show you from the word because I know it is best that way. The vow says in Matthew, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 19. Let's go to Matthew 19 so I can show you where I'm coming from. We're going to go to Matthew 19 and we will go to verse 5 and 6. Verse 5 and 6. Listen what the word of God said. For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And they two shall be one flesh. The word twain means two. And they two shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more two but one one flesh. 
What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Whatever God has joined together, let no man put asunder. In marriages today, people join themselves together and then they get married. They don't go and seek God's direction. They do their own thing. However, whether you didn't seek God for a spouse, for your spouse, or whether you do it because, you know, you do it because you think you love and, and, and all those things, you happen to get married which I think it's okay too, but that's your choice. As a Christian, that shouldn't be, but that's your choice, and, and God is good. So, what you do, you go and you get married, and I want you to understand, when you make that vow between you and God, it is a serious thing. When you make that vow, the Bible says that whatever God has joined together, let no man put asunder. When you marry and you make that vow, you become one. The Bible says you're not two anymore, you are one. Now what is going on in the churches that I would like to address today is the confusion. In churches, you have, uh, you know, husbands and wives, you have marriages, husband and wife is saved, and you have single women going after married men, you have single men going after married women, you have preachers in the pulpit that have a family and they're sleeping around with sisters in the church. I would like you to know let me tell you your end right now. I am not going to wait to get into anything. I'm going to tell you like it is now. You fail to understand that when you break up a home, what goes around comes around. And you fling yourself just like a whore. You fling yourself so cheap, it is not funny. Only whores live that way. That is not for the children of God. You are so bold and so brave and so barefaced that you are messing with people's marriage. It is not right in the sight of God. And you know what's going to happen to you? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to you right now. David committed adultery with Bathsheba. All right? Of course, he planned her husband's death and everything, and that was very wrong. Very, very wrong. They got a child together, or children, whatever. They got their child, and this child is born, and so forth, and, and Solomon is one of those. The child is born, and David is praying. He's in sackcloth and ashes. And he's fasting and crying out. And as he's crying out to God, all right, the child died. I want you to know, you whores out there, you live like a whore. And you young men, you men, young and old, going after, you know, married women. For David, it is a child. You're not thinking that when you commit that adultery, I mean, when you live in adultery and you're lusting after married men and married women, you're not realizing one thing. Some of you, may not even be in actual adultery, but the Bible says, lusting after women and men, you have, commit, you have committed adultery already. 
just lusting after a man or a woman. It is so shameful. It is so degrading. You have in this world all kinds out there. And you choose to break up marriages? What is wrong with your brains? For David, it's, it's, it's his child. For you, you don't know if it would be you. Are you not thinking right? How are you going to just break, break up people's homes? I'm talking to men and women now. How are you going to sit back and say that you're going to tamper with marriages? You're falling in love with a married man or a married woman. What is wrong with you? And I'm going to tell you where you're going to go unless you get your act together. In the sight of God, that is wrong. All right? In the sight of God, that is ugly. And God hates that type of lifestyle. Some of you are old. You have children in your life. Big children, adults, grandchildren. Aren't you ashamed of yourself to want to go break up people's home? And you're old and thinking that you're, you know, you're okay in the sight of God? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? What are you going to tell your grandchildren? What are you going to tell your children? Because many of you have kids. I was talking to somebody in Guyana about that. You can't, you, you, you can't, you know, just find if you're burning up. Why don't you find somebody that is single? You're causing heartache in homes? And trust me today, what you sow, you're going to reap. And as soon as you win that man, that married man, and win that married woman, and you think that you're going to get married to them, break up their homes and get married to them, they're going to turn around. And you know what they're going to do to you? The same thing and 10,000 times worse. You will never know peace. You will never know joy and happiness. Because why? You are destroying people's lives. Can you imagine if those parties have children? You, they will curse you day and night. They will curse you day and night. Aren't you, aren't you not thinking straight? You pastors sleeping around with, with sisters in the church. You are, how low can you get? How degrading can you get? Grieving the Holy Spirit. You stand up there preaching enticing words. Words to lure when, men and women to yourselves. I'm talking to pastors, men and women. L you know, just preaching to lure men and women to yourselves. Is that the gospel? God is not pleased with those things. And you trust me. What you're doing in that pulpit... Mr. Preacher and Mrs. Preacher, I would like you to know, especially if you have families and you're living that kind of degrading life, I would like you to know you don't have long. You don't have long. If you don't repent and clean up, you don't have long in that pulpit, you will crash. God will expose you big time. You don't get away with things like that. In the church, elders sleeping around. You know, choir leaders sleeping around. Choirs, men and women in choir sleeping around. Ushers sleeping around. 
what is wrong? You better get your act together because in Jesus' name, God will expose you and he'll bring you right down. Unless you repent, clean up. If I were you, I would step down. You know why? It's a fearful thing to stand in, to, in, in the hands of the living God. It's a fearful thing. God is not pleased with your lifestyle. If you're a Christian, be an example. You're so full of lust. You're so consumed with lust. You can't pray. You can't study. And if Jesus come right now, you're doomed for hell. Is it worth it? All these years you try to serve God, men and women. And today you're running to break up homes. Can you imagine how you're grieving the Holy Spirit? I don't care what you're going through in your marriage. I don't care how tough you have it. Listen, I was divorced and remarried. And then I divorced and remarry my initial husband. That is what God wanted. That is what he told me to do. I'm not saying that I did right because divorce is a serious thing. But what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, I've been there, done that. In the sight of God, I know better, and it is wrong. Do not try to break people's marriage up. It will come right back in your face. If you're successful in breaking up that marriage and marrying people's husbands and people's wives, you will face judgment upon judgment upon judgment upon judgment. And you think about this seriously. Is it worth it? The answer is no. You can't do that. Praise the Lord. There is no way it's going to work. Now, we're going to go to another scripture. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 7, 9. 1 Corinthians 7, 9. The word of God says, It is better that you marry than to burn. Like we read initially, marriage is very honorable to God, very honorable. And it's better to marry than to burn. Listen what the Word of God says. 1 Corinthians 7, 9. Now we, we, we better back up a little bit. Let us go from verse 7. For I would that all men were even as I myself. Now, Paul, as we all know, you know, he's just explaining here, it's best to be single. But it's just, it's just Paul, if you know what I mean. But every man has his proper gift of God, one after this Mary, one after this manner, and another man another after that manner. I say therefore to be, I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Praise God. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. It's better to marry than to burn. Marriage is honorable. I personally don't have any problems with marriage. If a person is burning up with lust, you know, it is the proper thing for you to ask God for a husband or a wife and that you get yourself a husband and wife 
you know, and settle down. But you can't go after married women and married men. How shameful that is. And you think that, you know, you're going to have peace about that? You will not have peace. You'll be the most miserable on earth trying to break up people's marriage. I'm not saying marriage is easy, all right? It's ha it has its ups and downs. Trust me. It has its ups and downs. My marriage has ups and downs. I'm not standing saying I have a perfect marriage. I don't. You know, there is ups and downs. But I know what the word of God says. I don't war. I don't carry on. I don't cuss. I don't, you know. If my husband is saying something and it's not right, I don't go and, you know, and, and, and in a corner and mope. No. And, and just don't cook for him and starve him and don't wash his, 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 his dirty laundry. You can't do those things. All right? You do what is right in the sight of God as a wife or a husband. A wife has her duties. And you have to do that which is right. Praise the Lord. Marriage has its ups and downs. But, you know, you go and pray and you ask God to resolve stuff and let that, you know, love flow again. That you have to be responsible. There has to be integrity and responsibility. But I'm going to tell you something right now. Not because you may have problems in your marriage gives you legal right to, to, to go and, you know, try to lust after another woman or, or, or a man. No, you go to God and you do it according to God's word and you forgive and you move on. Something, another problem comes up next day, you do the same thing. Pray and just trust God. But you don't just don't up and, and walk out of a marriage. Let me tell you, are you a man? Are you a woman? How disgraceful to let people come and just want to, you know, to upset your marriage. You have women out there that fling themselves to men. Come on, man. You don't have character. You are dis you're living a shameful and a disgraceful life. And then you're calling yourself a Christian? If you know what, what, what you are playing with is heavy judgment, quit. Leave people's husbands and wives alone. Go get your own. Go get your own. It's the proper thing to do. Not people who are married. Get your own. Jesus had a conversation with a woman. And it was the woman at the well. And we're going to go to John chapter 4 right now. John 4. They're having a discussion and so forth. And I'm going to read. But there is a particular verse that I would really like us to focus on. So listen what Jesus is saying. John chapter 4. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he went through Samaria. He saw the need to go through Samaria. Then comes he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his own son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. You can say that was about 
12 noon, midday time. And there comes a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, if you, know the, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, give me to drink, you would have asked of him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. For where do you get the living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank there for himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. That I shall give him, but the water that, sorry, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call your husband and come. Now, the story is getting very, very interesting now. Go call your husband and come. Now, in a praise form, I would like to cover from verse 1 to verse 16, and then we'll go, then we'll continue. The conversation started because she is, she is at the well, and that is where she goes to draw water every day at the well, at Jacob's well. And the conversation started, and Jesus said, give me a drink. And the debate is on, how come you are a Jew asking a drink of me who is a Samaritan, when the Jews and the Samaritan have nothing in common. And that is very true. The Samaritans are always considered very low-class people. And of course, you know, the Jews, they're always up there. So Jesus is, um, she's saying to Jesus that, okay, you're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan, you're asking me for a drink, how come? And Jesus tried to explain to her, that, you know, the water in the well will make her thirsty. The water she can go every second of the day to draw water with her water pot, that water will cause her to thirst and thirst again. It is like, you know, when you are thirsty, you go to your refrigerator, and no matter what you do, you can't quench that thirst for a week. You will definitely go back before you draw water. You went to the, to, to the refrigerator for juice or water or, or your water fountain or whatever, and you drink. And then, you know, another few hours, you want to drink again because why? You're thirsty again. So Jesus was trying to draw the parallel. In this well, there is natural water that is going to make you thirsty, and, and it's going to make you thirsty all the time. So here you will have to come and draw water every day, all the time. But Jesus was trying to explain to her that if she recognized who is talking to her, that it's the living water that she is talking to. That when he gives a person life, they will never thirst again. So Jesus was trying to tell her, I am the living water. I am the fountain of life. I am, you know, one that gives life. And Jesus is trying to say, if you drink of me, you will never thirst again. But this natural water is going to make you thirsty all the time. And of course, she's trying to so put up her argument and so forth. However, she is mellowing down. 
Because in verse 14, she, you know, uh, she's saying that Jesus said, verse 13, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this water will thirst again. 14, whosoever drinks of this water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Praise God. What, what Jesus is trying to tell her here, that he can quench her thirst spiritually. So the, the conversation has turned from the natural to the spiritual now. So Jesus is trying to tell her, I have water to give you that you will never thirst again. Praise the Lord. So here's what it says. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him as a well springing up into everlasting life. Verse 14. The woman said unto her, unto him, Sir, give me this water. So she is mellowing down. She is understanding now what Jesus is trying to say to her. So she said, Sir, give me this water. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. She didn't quite get that, you know, too clear. Jesus is trying to tell her about her spiritual situation. And she's trying to, to say, well, okay, if you quench my thirst spiritually, I won't have to come back here to drink. So, but she doesn't understand spiritual stuff and natural stuff. However, she's getting it. Now, here is a sensitive question. Jesus, knowing all things, said to her in verse 16, listen what he says. Go call your husband. Now, let's go on. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, You have well said that you have no husband, for you have, for you have had five husbands. And the one you live with right now is not your husband. All right? So Jesus is letting her know that once you are, once you drink of me, the living water, in other words, once you get saved, you got to now clean up your act. All right? You got to clean yourself up. Because going back home, now that you're understanding that I am not an ordinary person, I am a prophet that is now telling you about your life. I am now a prophet that is really, really screened you, and I'm now going to strip you of everything. So Jesus is saying to her, okay, now I want you to know, you, yes, you told the truth that you do not have a husband, and Jesus said, said to her plainly, you have had five, and he said to her, the one that you're living with is not your own. Now, you do the math. Do the math. Jesus let her know plainly what her condition is. Now, if she has accepted Jesus, which she did, because she asked for the living water, which is Jesus. All right? So Jesus now is going to clean this woman right up. He's going to clean her up. He's going to let her know what she's doing is wrong. As long as you're serving me, as long as you have the living water, as long as you're Christian, what you have, what you're doing at home is wrong. You dealt with five, the one you have is not your own. In other words, Jesus is saying, clean up. Do you think you're going to get away with people's husbands and people's wives interfering with people's marriages? You will never, ever be happy. Because what you're trying to do is trying to get them to marry you. Because you're on the shelf. You can't find a man. You're on the shelf, all right? You're gathering dust for years. Why do you think, you know, you marry, you have children. Some of you have married, you have children. Why do you think you're going through that? Because you're a peach? You're not a peach, okay? That is why you're going through that. 
So you're going to stay on your shelf and you're going you're gonna to gather dust because nobody wants you. That's plain and that's simple. You know why nobody wants you? You're not doing things God's way. And remember, your ways are not God's ways. His ways are past finding out. If you do it God's way, God will bless you with a husband or a wife. That you will not have to be intrusive in people's marriages. It is wrong. It is wrong. And you know what? You're just a whore. It's wrong. It is wrong. Wrong things can't be right. So you're gathering dust. Nobody wants you that is single. All right? So you're going to be intrusive now, and you're going to break up a home. What is wrong with you? You know what? You're sick. You are sick. And you know what has brought you to this point? I'm talking to Christians all over who are messing around. You're not praying. You're not in the Word. You don't want to serve God the way you should. That is why Satan has led you to do what you're doing now. And it's wrong. I pray that you repent and God have mercy on you and that you pray and ask God for a man or a woman, a wife or a husband, and stop breaking up people's marriage. All right? You know what you would live under? Curse. You will live under curses unless you do it the right way. That is not right. And you cannot be blessed for a life like that. It is wrong. Now listen what she said. The woman said unto him, Sir, that's verse 19, Sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and you say in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you know not. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour comes, and now is, when the true, watch it, the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah comes, which is called Christ. He will tell us all things. She has the Messiah right in front of her. She has the Son of God right in front of her. She has Jesus right in front of her. And she's saying, I know the Messiah will come. Can you imagine? All right. I can understand, right? I can understand. She wasn't a Christian before she met Christ. So I can understand all of that. Before she met Christ, she was living with six men, one after the other. And Jesus addressed it. Praise God. And all these things are happening, and this woman made a turn around. Listen what she said, verse 28. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, come on now, and said to the men, she was doing her business in that city. She went to say, come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? And they went out of the city and came to him and so forth. You read this story. What I'm trying to say here right now 
is that the woman recognized that Jesus is a prophet. All right? And he has told her everything about her life, past, present, and future. And listen what is going on here. He said to her, he said, you know, you guys, you worship here. But the, Jesus was saying to her, I seek, you know, I seek people to worship me in spirit and in truth. I am the Christ. And people have to worship me in spirit and in truth. When you're running after people's husband and wives, are you in the spirit? Are you seeking the truth? All you're doing is to seek to fulfill your, the lust of your flesh. Just like how you have, you know, these married men and women in, in porn, living in pornography. It's the same thing. Trying to get fulfillment, whatever, however. The devil is a liar. You are married. You must respect your spouse. It is wrong in the sight of Almighty God. It's wrong. Seek God for a spouse. It's better you marry than to burn. It's better you find your own husband or your own wife than to break up people's home. And those spouses, I'm telling you, their tears will, will, will be on you until you die. You will never know peace. Wrong is wrong. Now, we are going to go to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. We're going to go from verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband. Don't try to go and run around after people's husband. Submit yourself to your own husband. That's the word. Your own. Get your own. All right? You have a problem with your marriage? You go to God with it? If divorce is involved, which is, which is tragic, if divorce is involved, you know, I was divorced too. I, I went there. I've been there, done that. It's not, it's not an easy thing when you have children and they have to go through all the pain and the heartache of living without their mother or father and then their step mother and father comes in and they treat them like dirt many times, many of them. Many of them are not kind. But you're not understanding what you sow, you have to reap. Get it? Submit yourself to your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he's the savior of their body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. All right. This is what the Lord is saying. Submission is important. All right? You don't go after people. You don't run after another man or a woman. No, 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 it ain't going to work. Your wife is not a piece of trash. You got to respect her. You have to honor her. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Many times it's not the case. A wife wants to rule and overrule. 
But men, you have to have some guts. You can't let a woman rule you. That's wrong. Be a man. Man up. All right? This talks about submission. Husbands. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no man ever yet ate his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Okay, what are you going to do with this? Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. But no, you have eyes on another woman. You have eyes on other women. You are so lustful, and you are so wicked, and you are so evil, and you want God to bless you? Yeah, right. You're living under a curse, and you better remove yourself from the curse because your eye is evil and wicked. You're walking in the lust of the flesh rather than walking in the spirit. Just evil and wicked. Have your eyes on somebody else. And this Bible teaches us when you make that vow, you are one. You are one. You and your wife is one. But no, you have. You're admiring somebody outside. Huh? And you want the blessing of God? Ain't gonna happen. God can't bless wickedness. He will judge wickedness. All right? And the same thing with the wife. Oh, you know. My husband is getting old and, you know, he can't really do whatever, you know, and this and that. Let me tell you, you are just a whore. Why don't you be a wife and a mother to your children But if you have? Why don't you be a grandmother to your children? Why don't you respect what God is saying about the word? Aren't you ashamed to carry yourself like that? And trust me, you have these women that throw themselves on men. You are just shameless and evil and wicked. You will never be happy. Never. Unless you get things right with God. What are you going to do? It's not the will of God for Christian marriages to go that route. All right? It's not the will of God. All right. Your marriage is not working out, and you end up in a divorce. I did. God is good. He has forgiven me. He, has for he will forgive you. But mighty God, are you just going to go irresponsibly, you're just going to go on and just throw yourself and beg God, you know, beg God and let him seek, let you seek him and let him guide you. You got to remarry. I don't have a problem with those things. I'm, I'm just, you know, you say, well, Pastor Jean, it is wrong. No, it's not wrong. The Bible says you're better marry than to burn. That's the word. It's not wrong. But, uh, but Pastor Jean, you can't, you, ju you just can't, you can't, just can't separate. Uh, you can, unless there is adultery. All of that, I agree. Abuse, yes, I agree. But some of you are in your marriage. Uh, 
You're not divorced. Some of you are in it. And you're carrying on with the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. And you're, you're eyeballing other women and men and you are in your marriage. It's wrong. Clean up or God will judge you. All right? Get it? Get your act together. It is wrong. This is not the way God intended for Christians. All right? You got to come clean. And you got to do that which is right in the sight of God. Or else you will be judged. Every sin has a payday. Whatsoever man sow, that is what he shall reap. Good. That's the word. I didn't write this book. All right. The Samaritan woman took heed and her life was transformed. God can transform you the same way. Put away your wickedness. You will not have it easy. Put away your wickedness. And we're going to pray now. And you make it right with God. Those of you who are interfering with marriages. All right. Those of you who are in marriages. Seeking relationships in your marriage. You know, I mean, you're married and you're seeking relationship. You're very sick. You're very sick. Trust me. You are very sick. And you will not have it easy. May God help you. Let's pray. Everybody who are in that predicament, let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, pray after me. Forgive me of all my sins. I do repent. May you have mercy on me for having a lustful eye. May you have mercy on me for wanting to destroy marriages. May you have mercy on me for wanting somebody's husband or somebody's wife. It's wrong. And Father God, I do repent. I do repent, Lord. And as I get my life in order, I will now seek you for my own husband or my own wife. And if it is your will to bless me with one, it will happen once I live the right way, according to the book. And if I'm never to get married again, Lord, or if I'm never to marry, you will give me the grace. If I have to live the eunuch life, you will give me the grace. Because your perfect will be done. Lord, because I'm going to take the prayer a different way now. Many of you have been divorced. You, don't, you women don't want to see another man, so you become a lesbian. Father God, I know how I live. It's wrong. That is contrary to your word. It's even worse than if I was sleeping out with a man or committing fornication with a man. But to be a lesbian? Father God, I'm not putting a degree to sin. But help me to clean up. Some of you men, you're married. You're in your marriage and you're going, you're, you're heterosexual now, bisexual. You, you're, going now, you're going now with men. So you have your wife and you're going with another man. How sick can you get? Father God, may you have mercy upon me for living that type of life. That's not the way you want me to live. I am sorry, Lord. Forgive me for all the confusion in my life as a child of God. I want to make it right because I do not want to die lost. 
I must make it right. I receive Jesus in my heart in a fresh way. I consecrate my life to you in a fresh way. And have mercy upon me, Lord. And please forgive me like you had with a Samaritan woman. In Jesus' name, amen. May God richly bless you, love you. And I pray that you take this message seriously. For all those of you who are playing church, get it right and quickly. May God bless you and love you. Bye.